and it says we're live on the RTF Sports Network. Got to work on my radio voice, Sports Network. There you go. Maybe I can get that as like a, a filter or something over my voice. I feel like that's like an add-on I could use. I yeah. feel like that exists. I need to do that. Welcome, everybody, to On and Off the Field Live. As I am just bantering and saying useless garbage, I'm very giddy for some reason right now. We have an angry react on our Facebook uh, live stream right now for some reason. I don't think because uh, Michael, I said yeet. Yeet is uh, my favorite word. That is not in the dictionary. And Michael hates it when I say that. So I got an angry react. But we are live on the RTS Sports Network and Facebook and YouTube. And I am here, like always, with Durf. What's going on, my man? Oh, you know, just staying dry over here with this thunderstorms rolling in. Finally cooling off, but... Yeah, other than that, not too much. How about you, Dylan? Yeah, like I said, I, I really like watching thunderstorms. It's mm-hmm. like one of my more favoritist activities, watching the rain pour down. It didn't last very long. That's what's upsetting. It, it's been very fast moving the past couple times here. Oh, yeah. It's been like that. Yeah, like the last time it rains, like, oh, it's finally raining, and it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my lawn shows it, too. My lawn is is brown probably more brown than green at this point it's bad Oof. yeah but we are this is our new time slot well not new it was our last week also we were live tuesday 7 8 p.m eastern standard time uh if you're following us on facebook on on out the field or the rts sports where you can watch our beautiful faces and you can partake in the show like in the comment section that's the whole point of a live show Absolutely. is to interact so much fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, kind of like we have over here. We have Jesse and Michael, for also from the RTF Sports Network over here. And I was actually posed with a question from Jesse, who is the best Seahawk of all time? Well, he just said best Seahawk ever, but that's a real toughie. That is... It, the Seahawks have not had the longest history, mm-hmm. and especially not the most glorious history. I mean, they've only... They've been to three Super Bowls. They've won one. Oh, they choked one. Oh, boy, who's the best? See, I normally say Lofa Tatupu just because he was like the first Seahawk I really grabbed onto besides yeah. Marshawn Lynch. I really, Lofa Tatupu was just, uh, one, I loved his name, and two, he was a powerhouse. I've always been attracted to Seahawk linebackers because now we got Bobby Wagner mm-hmm. and like KJ Wright, people like that. And I feel like we have another another group of great young linebackers coming up, but. The best of all time. That's a tough That's one. That's real tough. It really is tough. I love Sean Alexander, MVP. I don't know how many Seahawk MVPs there's ever been. I know there's at least one. Walter Jones, now in the Hall of Fame, mm-hmm. offensive lineman. Steve Hutchinson, I believe, is getting in this year, but he went to the Vikings. I think he's going into the Hall as a Viking, unfortunately. Oh. Yeah. Lots of great Seahawks. There's a, a very rich history of great players, so I'm going to say final answer, Lofa Tatupu, because that's just he's he's my favorite Seahawk of all time, and he was also very good. Do you know who Jamie Morelli is? Morelli? Yes, I do. Uh, Hi. Yeah, we used to work at Home Depot together. Oh, Home Depot yeah, back Depot. in the day. Yeah, back in the day. Well, now we're bringing in our our Home Depot people onto the live stream that's really great so just in case jamie doesn't know fred where can you find us follow us all of this stuff where you can find us on instagram facebook and twitter you can also subscribe to our youtube channel for uncut episodes of our recorded shows you can watch our live shows again and you can find other great content on the way you can head over to on off the field.com to learn more about the show as well as where you can find our episodes and the charities that we're involved in. Once make sure to also rate and review the show on iTunes or Apple podcasts as it's called now. Um, so that we know how we are doing and what you like or dislike about the show so that we can improve to make a better show for you. Lastly, make sure to head over to the RTF sports network.com where you can catch on and off the field on their live show now on Tuesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time 
And our new recorded show time is now Fridays from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Bang, boom, done. I just looked at our Instagram uh, page real quick. We have 666 followers. So if you're not following us on Instagram right now, please go do that very quickly because yes. I I don't need that kind of ju- bad juju in my life. I don't. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I don't need that. Get rid of that. Someone go like it real quick. <laughs> I'll let you know when you can defollow after we get to like 668. So we don't drop back down to 666. Oh. Uh, one more thing that was on our website is our charities tab, of course. And Feeding America is still up there. But our current one right now is the Boys and Girls Club of America. That is our current charity that we're pushing for. And I did send an email and left a phone call with the Boys and Girls Club of Rochester. Nice. To try and set up a local event, and I have heard nothing back, unfortunately. Uh, maybe. Eh, give it time. <laughs> yeah, give it time. They're busy over there, I'm sure. Yeah. Especially these days. Who knows? they got all kinds of crap going on with uh, the Rona and everything. Speaking yeah. of the Rona, my goodness, the Rona's, the Rona's come back with a fury. That hasn't really that come has. back. It's just. I mean, not so much here, but other parts of the country, it's definitely kind of come back to bite you a little bit. And I, I saw a really funny graph. It definitely wasn't like a graph that was meant to be accurate or anything, but it was before, you know, pre like phase two, maybe phase three of everything happening mm-hmm. uh, in the different States, like basically reopening. It's mm-hmm. like the big part of the graph was, was fear. And then the small part of the graph was coronavirus cases. And it said like post, open and reopening they like they flipped no fear but lots of cases oh uh, was that the office meme yeah the office one with like jim with the whiteboard there whatever it was yeah that's like it's kind of interesting concept you know people like became less scared of it like ah there's there's not a lot of cases anymore i'm going back to the bar and look at florida alone last week we talked about like the three thousand new cases Right. Really, really ramping back up. And it's ramping up in other countries still, too. We're normally what the it was, what, three weeks behind uh, Europe. Mm -hmm. And now Denmark has a bunch of new cases. So it's far from over over, folks. We're still having to deal with this, whether it might not kill you. It might not give you a lot of symptoms. It might not be that scary, but it's still a thing Mm -hmm. that is still very life threatening to a lot of people. That is the point. Yep. So that's that's why we need to be still need to be careful. Just put the stupid mask on. It's not going to kill you, but the Rona might. So just put it on. I was like, speaking <laughs> of that, I was actually at Home Depot this past weekend, and you know you're walking with your mask, you're walking around, you were getting some carpet for our garage, and I was like walking around. I'm like, wow, it just feels normal now. It doesn't feel weird yeah. with the mask anymore. I'm like, oh. So this is kind normal. of our yeah, kind of our new normal, <laughs> right? Hopefully it's not the new normal for long. I mean, hopefully vaccine can bring us back to real normal. Right. I don't, I don't, I, the, I don't mind the mask either anymore. Really just throw it on, whatever. Not a big deal. Yeah. I even got a Seahawks one. I don't have it up here with me. Unfortunately would have showed it off, oh, nice. but <laughs> it's a really nice one, but it's like fleece. Oh. Order in the mail, it's like fleece. So for the summer, it's a little rough. Yeah, but I can't even feel my breath coming through it. That's how I know it's a pretty effective one. There you so go. I know I'm. I feel pretty safe with it. I feel good. good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rona's is still out there. Be careful. Stay safe. And we actually have one more announcement that I almost forgot about. We're ramping up. I forgot. I should have made a banner for this for the people watching live. Uh, we're starting an on and off the field fantasy football league. And probably a pick 'em league too. All right. Yeah, it's it's official. It's not it's not made up yet. We're still working out some details of how we want to tackle this. But mm-hmm. if you want to be a part of it, really the only requirement that we have right now is that you f- are in the group OOTF family on Facebook. The OOTF family group. That is our group page, and that's where a lot of the. Um, that's where a lot of the fantasy football will be happening. We're gonna we're gonna announce it on the show, but yeah. a lot of the details will be inside the group. All right. Um, yeah. It will be a buy-in league. We don't know if it's gonna be twenty dollars, fifty dollars. 
got to kind of get a feel for the room. Mm -hmm. Uh, But all the money that is going to be used to buy into the league is going to go towards our current charity, which is the Boys and Girls Club of America. So you can play fancy football and be charitable at the same time. Who doesn't want that? Exactly. Who wouldn't want to do that? And I think, uh, yeah, dates forthcoming. Mm-hmm. You know, joint fees forthcoming. Hopefully we'll have this information by the next live show. So in the meantime, OOTF family, join it up. It'll be a great time. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how many people. If we have to make two leagues, we'll do two leagues. If yeah. a lot of people are interested, let's do it. Let's do it. Well, that just means more money for charity. That's, all, that's what it's all about. Absolutely. So... I think we're ready to talk some sports. I think so, too. As we ramped up the show already for 13 minutes. So maybe not exactly 13 for the... Oh, we've been here for a while, it feels like. Jeez. But we are ready to get yeah. diving into the nitty-gritty. And I have to start out real quick, before we get into the other sports, a quick Moran Talks Morons. <laughs> And thank you, Michael. Shared 13 times and even hashtagged the shared. Look at this guy. Look at that. Supporting the show. That's a top fan right there. Love you, Mike. I think he is a top fan. He better be a top fan. Oh, sure. Hope he is. <laughs> he better. He better be. <laughs> we got to do a quick Moran Talks Morons. And we have to focus this towards Major League Baseball. And a lot of people might think, wow, Major League Baseball. But they just came up with a deal finally. Baseball is intimate. And it's it's coming, <laughs> whatever that word is. Minute. We are going to have baseball. The tentative date is July 24th for a 60-game schedule. Wow, we made it. Not so fast. If you really, if you think about it, mm-hmm. this is embarrassing. It's embarrassing for the league because they accepted the deal that was provided to them back in March. March 2020. This deal was presented saying, hey, MLB, come up with a date, come up with a schedule, and we'll show up. That's all they had to do back in March. But here we are in June 23rd. They just accepted that March deal, and now all we get is 60 games. Okay, so it's 60 games. Cool. Half a season, a little, well, probably less, definitely less than half a season. If you accept, accepted this back in March, it's not only you probably get more games. Maybe it, was, it would have only been 80 games, would have been 90 games, whatever the case may be. You still would have had more games. And then also, you would have been the only sport active at the time. You could have used that as a platform for whatever you wanted. Baseball could have been the first sport back. Baseball could have brought in more eyeballs than ever before on national television. Yeah, sure, okay. you're not going to have fans in the seats, but guess what? You have every single person in the country. Guess what? We are watching Korean baseball. Guess what people over in Korea are doing once Korean baseball turns off? They're tuning into the MLB because that's what people do. There's no other sports. Guess what? Let's tune into the only thing available, which is Major League Baseball. You're bringing in more eyeballs than you would ever had in the world. Anything else. And they failed. And they looked like complete jackholes in the process. That is probably the worst part of it is that Instead of, yeah, sure, you didn't accept the deal back in March, and you, it's not like you stayed quiet since then. You have been in the headlines every single day, making yeah. yourselves look like idiots, bickering about money when millions of people are out of jobs because of the virus, making yourselves look like greedy sons of guns that everybody hates. Now, sure, you'll come back. Sure, you'll come back about the same time as NBA, as NHL, mm-hmm. NASCAR and golf's already going. You might bring some eyeballs, but not nearly. You probably won't even bring back your regular fan base at this point. So not only did you lose out on the positive side of gaining eyeballs, you're probably going to get less eyeballs now than you probably would have if you just started on time. Absolutely. Yeah. But that is my segment. I had to get that out there. As soon as I heard they accepted the March deal, it just, what's up, Gray? My old army bud with the motor pool. Oh, nice. Great guy. Got drunk with him far too many times. <laughs> 60 games. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, we're all, you say, where is October for baseball? 
I mean, you know, at least play. See, that's the other thing. The Mariners have a chance this year. Let me throw that out there. Throw on my Mariners hat real quick. I think the Mariners got a real chance this year. They only got to play 60 games. Let's do it. Like We had a good beginning of the season last year. Mm-hmm. Maybe they have a chance. Probably not, but it's fun to talk about. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> Yeah, but that's my segment. And as we end, Moran talks morons. I'll get off my soapbox. We enter the regular segment of the other sports. And there's really only other one other thing that we have for the other sports, and that is NASCAR. Mm-hmm. NASCAR, the sport that was the most racist, is now leading the way against racism. <laughs> Love it. It's, let's put that on a banner. There you go. <laughs> uh, NASCAR is really doing amazing stuff this day, banning the Confederate flag. Mm-hmm. They're at least trying their best to ban the Confederate flag from their games. Uh, Bubba Wallace leading the way, the only African-American black um, NASCAR driver in the league. There was a really great moment on Monday during the race at Talladega where everybody pushed Bubba Wallace's car to the front of pit row. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they stood there. And it's an, this is the part that I, I kind of want to bring up. They all stood with Bubba Wallace there for the national anthem, which is a very different take on, you know, the NFL stance of taking a knee during the anthem for change. And it just goes to show there's different ways to, to show like support for a cause, mm-hmm. you know, they're standing with their, their black, um, their one black I don't know, coworker. I want to say coworker. That's probably not the right term to use. Uh, their only black athlete there. Yeah. And, um, it was it was really a great moment, and it's it's a different way to show your support, and I, I really appreciate it. It was really a beautiful moment with a lot of great pictures taken. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Like I, I'm curious as to how that selfie turned out that Bubba took at the end there, or when they got to the front of the the pit lane there, like he took a selfie with everyone behind him. Oh, like I'm just curious. I'm. I haven't seen it on social media yet. I'm just kind of curious to how it turned out because that would be something to like make a poster and that would be something that would be moving and then maybe use that as kind of like a, a charitable event. Like, hey, this great thing happened. Like, let's use this, donate, get some money together, work on some more Black Lives Matter uh, foundations and so forth. Yeah, and it's it's just it's just if you would have if, if there was a betting line at Vegas that said here are the like five major sports, um, and here's the money lines for which sport will be the most against or the most progressive against racism. Mm-hmm. No one's picking NASCAR, and I think that's why it's made made such a profound statement is that the mm-hmm. league that's from the South that flew the Confederate flag is the one standing up against all that, which is just amazing. But uh, the quickly to just, you know, um, we were going to go off about the noose being found mm-hmm. in Bubba Wallace's garage in Talladega. The FBI did their investigation, and it turns out it has been there since last fall. Michael says last October, and it was just a door pull. It was just there to pull down the garage door or something like that. Mm-hmm. So um, that I don't know how to react to that. <laughs> yeah, it, is kind of, it does raise the question of why was it not pulled down last fall is kind of like what Michael mentioned in the comments here. Um, but I also, yes, you can ask why it wasn't pulled down last fall, but at the same time, everything that's happened in the last couple weeks has just completely changed the face of NASCAR. And I think it's for the better. And then yes, we didn't get, they didn't get it right then, but they're getting it right now. Right. And there was no pictures taken of said noose. Like, was it really, was it really tied like a noose? I know nooses are very specific in how they look. Mm -hmm. So maybe someone purposely did tie that like a noose just as a joke. I don't know why someone would, but there's a lot of sick people in this world. So maybe it was a noose and they took it down and it took too long. And if there was a picture of it, 
then you know people can start making real assumptions about what happened. Maybe yeah. it was just a knot. Maybe someone just it was just something that looked like a noose. It was just something there you could pull on. I we don't really know now. It's leaving a lot up there until we can see pictures. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it should have been taken down earlier. And I think that goes along with you know people like um, uh, Aunt Jemima being taken off of the maple syrup, mm-hmm. and uh, I believe there was another one. Um, something else was removed another black figure from something i don't remember what it was but it's it's all about a matter of removing the subtle racism Mm -hmm. it might not people think if you remove aunt jemima from a maple syrup bottle guess what it's still the same exact maple syrup and it's not going to impact your life and people people are at man you're a snow you people are snowflakes this is insanity I need Aunt Jemima, Uncle Ben's. Uncle Ben's was uh, was removed yep. as well. So it, it's just removing the subtle racism, and you can you can dive into Aunt Jemima's history, and it is a history of slavery. And okay, whatever. It's still it doesn't need to be there. It doesn't, and the history of it is a little little gross. But it really, at the end of the day, it'll be forgotten about in two weeks, and. You'll still have your maple syrup. You shouldn't even be eating that kind of maple syrup. Go get some real stuff from your yeah. local from your local uh, organic shop or something. Hey. That stuff's got all kinds of gross crap in it. Aunt Jemima wouldn't dare make maple syrup that gross and disgusting with all those preservatives in it. Go buy some real maple syrup for thirty dollars a quart. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it is very expensive, though. It is, but it's so good. What up, Terry? Yeah, what's going on? Terry joining the show. Um, oh, the syrup thing. The family is very upset about that. Yeah, I did see something about um the family being upset about. Oh, Mrs. Butterworth is retiring as well. Yeah, oh. I did see something about the family was upset about um uh, her being removed from the bottle. Mm-hmm. Uh, it can be taken so many ways, but I'll just keep I'll just keep reiterating it. It's it just removes the very small things mm-hmm. that we really don't need. Right. I mean, at, you you just don't need that and people will forget about it. It's not a big deal, mm-hmm. but down the road, you don't have to see it anymore. It's that it's that subtle thing. It's the way they call it subtle racism. It's things you don't notice, right. but now that's being taken away. Oh yeah, now I notice it. Mm-hmm. If it was left alone forever, no like just no one would still notice it. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's um, it's it's caused up quite a stir lately, but this all this this all goes back to uh, the noose not being a noose, I guess. Um, yeah. In Bubba Wallace's garage, whatever it was, I'm hoping they release a picture soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's kind of what I'm waiting for. But that is it for other sports. And as we approach kind of the halfway mark of this show, a little bit uh, sooner than that, we have because we have a bunch of stuff to get to with our favorite sport yeah the nfl the one that we know the most about can actually input logical information on yes (laughs) (laughs) so um you put something in here for the espies did you watch the espies because i did not so no i did not watch the espies um i didn't even see any highlights of it either i was surprised me neither yeah I mean, you know, just looking up some new, some stuff, what's going on yesterday, and I kind of thought it was interesting that it was the NFL on Sunday that was awarded the League Humanitarian of the Year Award. And the League Humanitarian of the Year Award honors um, a professional sports league that are, rec- uh, sorry, recognizes a professional sports league's programmatic and philanthropic investments and its work for strategically engaging with athletes, teams, and business partners to create positive impact in communities. So the way that basically the NFL showed this um, as what they were doing, they earned the award for their work in the Huddle for 100, which was a volunteer initiative for the 100 season to get 
a ton of just community hours that the NFL was out in their community helping their communities. Um, I can't remember the exact number, but it was an insane amount that happened in the last year. Um, and also it's Stratathon, Draftathon, um, that was uh, going on during the NFL draft this spring, but it was also related to COVID-19 relief efforts. So it's just inter- I think about two weeks ago, I would have fully agreed with the NFL getting it. It's still, I think, very nice to see that the NFL is still getting it. But I don't know. What do you think? Do you think the NFL should have gotten it? Yeah, and then Michael also brought up Play 60, which is something they've had for a while now. And that the the NFL does do a lot for the community. And that's why we created the other part of this show that we don't highlight enough um, is the off the field portion. Right. And normally we stick with NFL athletes and we do the off the field stuff and it because it's easy because they do so yeah. much. It's constantly in the news. They have a whole award, 32 players, the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award, yep. 32 players highlighted for everything they do off the field. And there could be so many more that you can highlight for that. And and, and when you read the description like you did, um, especially the philanthropic uh, part, which is basically giving money and raising money, stuff like that. Yeah. It makes sense for the NFL to get it because they did raise a lot for the COVID-19 relief efforts, what they did with the draft. They they probably did, did deserve it, especially in the time frame. Yeah. But if you would have waited another, because I'm giving NASCAR the benefit of the doubt that they're going to they're gonna do something with the platform they have right now. Right. If you would have waited another month, maybe two months to hand out this award, mm. I'd be willing to bet NASCAR would be getting this award. Yeah, I I could I could see that. Yeah, I'm I'm really curious to, to see what kind of NASCAR does take the next step. I mean, I feel like they've done a ton so far, but there's still a ton more to go. Right. Theory with them. Um. Yeah, I'm just yeah. I think if it was in a month still for the SBs, I'd be curious to see how much more NASCAR could do in a month. Yeah, because this it, it it's the first step. And it's what people always talk about on Facebook because as things ramp down from riots right. and now it's really just a lot of peaceful protests. And once the protests die, it's about what, what, the, what changes next. So NASCAR has gotten to the point of, all right, the protest is removing the Confederate flag and taking a stance. Now it's a matter of getting those athletes all together, making NASCAR basically the top platform right now. Yeah. Um, and seeing what they can do with that platform, raising money, uh, getting in the community, really trying to mm-hmm. do something. So that's it's the action that's going to really matter down the road. Right. Yep. Um, Definitely. And I, I, it kind of just it, it's nagging in the back of my brain right now. So I kind of just need to get that out there because that's what my brain does. <laughs> it, it brings me back to the NBA mm-hmm. and Kyrie Irving saying, and a lot of people following Kyrie Irving saying, you know, we shouldn't have the season because then we can focus on social justice efforts. But look at NASCAR. NASCAR is active more than ever. They're, they're racing twice a week. Um, and look what they've done with their platform while they're participating in their sport. Yeah. And then in a, in a sport that is predominantly African-Americans playing the black community and with the NBA, Think of the think of what you can use that platform for for the black community. If you really get together down in Florida, mm-hmm. meet with the other players, think of something that you can do down there to really make a strong impact in America. That's what I focus on. If yeah. you're down there, obviously you can't be in the community helping. Mm-hmm. But and I'm I'm not a Kyrie Irving follower. I'm not the paparazzi. I'm, I don't I don't know what he's doing right now. But I haven't really heard a whole lot come out of Kyrie Ir- Irving's mouth about like what he's going to do instead of right. playing in Florida. And that's kind of the, that's kind of the beat I've been getting. Let's not go. Cause we have to help the community. Okay. How? And I haven't really heard the how yet. So yeah. right now I'm not a believer. Mm-hmm. I just think Kyrie's lazy. And we talked about that last week a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Plus he's on a team that's not going to win anything. So why go? Yeah. That's, that's just me. Oh, the next up here on the list, we got Brent Favre. Yeah, Brent Favre um, controversy yeah. with Brent Favre. 
believe he believes that Colin Kaepernick should be seen as a hero for the actions Kaepernick took based on his personal beliefs, and he compares him to the late Pat Tillman, who left the NFL in 2002 to defend his country. He listed in the U.S. Army, and he lost his life on the line of duty in 2004. That is a bold statement, Brett. That is a very I mean, bold statement, yeah. If you're trying to get yourself back in the news circuit because you're bored... <laughs> you were very successful. Yes. <laughs> but I think this I think this statement was shut down very quickly. Mm-hmm. It didn't really get too popular because of how bad of a claim it was. Yeah. I mean, do you ag- agree with I, I mean I agree with them to a certain extent. Right. But yeah. I mean I think everyone's kind of in the same boat here. What do you what do you think? Yeah, I mean I yeah, I don't like yes, Colin took a knee for his personal beliefs or uh, police brutality. And, but it's still something that's kind it's still something they're trying to change at the same time. Pat Tillman did something, I think completely different. He was like, Nope, see you later NFL. I have something I need to do across the world right now Mm -hmm. for a country that I love. And um, I mean, this was, 2002 when he left the NFL, it, I mean, it was shortly after 9-11, so like, there was a lot of heightened tensions there. I think it's two different levels of hero. I think yeah, you, is, you can't put them on the same platform, is basically what he's trying to do, yeah. Right, I think Pat Tillman's up here, sorry, up here, and Colin Kaepernick's down here. One did something, used the NFL as a platform, and left it, to do something for the nation. The other one went did something for the NFL, but then kind of got blackballed by the NFL and is now seeing changes years later. Yeah, it's it's definitely two different platforms. Right. You can't cuz he 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 said compare. He said put them together. These are the basically one and the same is what he tried doing. Mm-hmm. And and I it metaphorically, let's mm-hmm. say, Colin Kaepernick lost his professional life in the NFL. Because, yes, you might get some tryouts this year. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he'll get signed. Someone might sign him out of pity, but let's be honest, three years out of the league, he might be able to play, but it just, just off of pure age at this point, he doesn't really have an NFL future. If he makes it on a roster, great. I, I mean – it'll be symbolic that he made it back in the NFL that kicked him out uh, three years uh, ago. But Pat Tillman literally said, this is the life I'm in the NFL. I made it. I mean, his college story, just getting to the NFL in general, just, he was a small person, Mm -hmm. great story could have made millions of dollars. And he said, Nope, I have to hang it up and go fight for my country because of the, of the terrorist acts. you know, like you said, nine 11, and he lost his life. You you can't compare anything to that. Right. Yeah. You can't compare a guy who just was in the NFL and, yeah, he got kicked out. That's really bad. But he's still using a platform as best as he can. You just – there's no comparison. There's a mini comparison that mm-hmm. you can pull because they gave up the NFL um, to, to fight for other causes. But one of them was at a much more extreme cost. Yes. So, yeah, Brett – Work on your comparisons. <laughs> yeah, you at least work on your words. <laughs> Brett's never been a guy for um, yeah. really, you know, uh, not saying bold things. He's always been a a guy to just go out there and be him, and he's never going to apologize for something like this. I mean, he said what he said, and he that's how he feels, and that's right. fine. I get the comparison you're trying to make, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's a it's a little extreme. Yeah, yeah, it's a little. But I mean, I, I I watched a Brent Favre, uh, like a just his his sayings kind of highlight tape on Facebook, and I love I'll, I'll never forget. I love the one where he goes up to the ball boy. He's like, "Hey, you got any left handed balls?" Yeah, <laughs> 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 you got any left handed balls in there. <laughs> I just would love to see what the ball boy thought. I mean, Brett Favre is talking to him, and right. if Brett Favre asked for a left handed ball, oh, hold on, let me see. Yeah. 
<laughs> Let me see if I got one in here for Mr. Favre. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know. I would have loved to see the kids' reaction to that. Yeah. Oh, Dak is uh, on to like kind of player news now. Yeah, there Dak you go. Prescott. Stage one is complete. <laughs> Stage one is complete in my master plan. My my hottest take of the offseason. Dak Prescott has signed his franchise tag of $31.4 million, which Dak is probably thinking, I'm poor. I can never afford anything I ever want because I should be making $40 million. Only a mere 31.4. So sad. Sorry, Dak. How terrible for you. <laughs> yeah, they still have until July 15th to reach a long-term deal. My prediction, they will not. Dak Prescott will play. He will be benched, and he will be gone by 2021 season. Thoughts? To me. That sounds perfect yeah. <laughs> to me. Let it roll. I mean, the, the good thing with him signing the tag, though, is that he has to report to training camp, and he can't do a whole lot like Zeke did last year. So you know he's going to play this year. Well, you think he's going to play. They could just bench him and say, Here, Andy, it's your, it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> Plays week one, disaster. Get out of here. Most expensive <laughs> backup ever. <laughs> Throw five touchdowns or you're benched. Do it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I don't know that that kind of money. I would have said, "Yep, I'm back in March." <laughs> right. That's the thing I'll never get over. I realize there's a lot of pride when it comes to NFL core, especially quarterbacks, especially quarterbacks and thinking that you should be the top paid of your position even if you're not the best player at that position which Dak sure isn't see here's the thing with Dak I understand it I get it that everybody can someone do me a favor and care react to the stream whenever you get the chance we got we got a four we got a like we got a heart we got a laugh and we got an angry face someone give me a care react um I want to see that up there that that's really what I want yeah, sorry about that. But yeah, now I kind of lost my train of thought. But Dak is very up and down. The thing with Dak is when he's good, he's very good. He will have a game and he'll he'll blow out teams or at least it'll be high scoring because the defense is still sketchy. Mm-hmm. But then on his bad days, on his bad days, he'll he will so single handedly lose you games. And as we saw against the Eagles last year, yeah, uh, week sixteen or seventeen, he lost that game. Wide open receivers that he missed that could have been touchdowns and won that game, but he missed. When he's bad, he's bad. When he's good, he's good. Same thing with Jameis Winston. Obviously, there's more bad than good, but <laughs> it's kind of in the same. It's a, it's another bad comparison, but it's in the same wheelhouse. When yeah. he's good, he's good. When he's bad, he's bad. Yeah. Jameis was just a little bit more volatile than Dak, but you get you get the point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I'm going to stick with my thing. He mm. won't be signed long term. He he'll play, be bad, and he'll be out the door. And he'll be a. Oh, this will be fun. Let's say he's a Pittsburgh Steeler next season. Big uh-huh. Ben's last year. They don't like Mason. Dak's on the market. Ooh, that's ooh, that's that's juicy over there. I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but I like it. <laughs> I like I like that. I like to see Dak in in the yellow and black over there. That'd be cool. That'd be that'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, as long as he's out of Dallas, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, Dallas doesn't deserve a good quarterback. They can just have Zeke and be happy with it. Jamal Adams. Speaking of possible Cowboy acquisitions instead of departures. <laughs> Jamal Adams announced to the world on social media that he is trying, trying to get traded to Dallas because what he was, you know, he grew up in Dallas, Fort Worth area. So he's trying to come back to his home team. Mm-hmm. He's doing his best. And yeah. it's, if there is a Vegas betting line, I'm sure Dallas is the favorite. They have the most trade bait. Mm-hmm. Um, people have put, in, put Michael Gallup up there as the player they would trade along with, you know, first, second round picks. It makes sense. Yeah. Uh, The team I would like to see him, uh, I guess Brian's heading out. 
Hey, easy buddy. Oh, oh, hey, easy buddy. I see what he's saying now. Uh, hey, easy buddy. On, on, <laughs> I see what he's saying now. But yeah, I'd like to see him go to the Eagles personally. Uh, I, I believe we talked about this last week. I'll bring it up again. I believe he should go to the Eagles um, strictly because they they put um, the green haired guy at safety who was their corner. What was his um, Mills? Jalen Mills, I think. Yeah. yeah, they basically have a corner at safety. Mm-hmm. They need a safety. If there was anything you were going to drop a bunch of draft capital on, mm-hmm. it would be Jamal Adams because they don't have a safety right now. So that's something they, they need to pretty much put an investment into. Yeah, that, that's a good uh, that's a good choice there. But, yeah, it'll be interesting to see where he ends up. I think with Dallas having all the uh, the trade bait there or the trade capital, I think it's all but certain. Yeah, you would like to think mm-hmm. he wants to go there. I'm sure the Cowboys want him to secure up that secondary. Right. They have everything they need to get him. Mm-hmm. It seems like a done deal almost, but hey, we never, no one really said Tampa Bay was the landing spot for Tom Brady either. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people were thinking, you know, Colts and a couple other teams. And I don't even remember. It was so long ago. Chargers. Chargers people Colts. are saying a bunch of other teams. Everything but Tampa Bay. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, you, you really never know where these guys are going to end up. But that's all we have for NFL news. Yeah. We're going to jump into our main segment here for the last part of the show. And that is going to be uh, something Durf worked very hard on. An NFL division reset. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is a two-part series. We'll also be talking about this next week. But Mm -hmm. for this week, this is all the teams are still staying in the current conference. Yes. So kind of a little backstory here. We did all the division breakdowns the last couple of months getting our input from fans, kind of how they thought their teams did, and kind of got me started thinking about how the divisions were set up and kind of does it make sense still? Do we need to change up in the NFL? How Who's in whose division based on geographical locations for the most part, but also kind of like what makes sense in good, good competition. Um, so like Dylan said, it's going to be a two-part series across this week and next week. Um, we'll do one with it in the same conference, and then the one next week is kind of a, a free-for-all of what we've come up with. So I don't have a map with me. I had it on another file. I don't know if you have it available. Dylan. Oh, I think I know which one you're talking about. It's still on the Google Drive, right? Yeah. It's in that the, we use? The Excel file? I don't know. If yeah, you I think I saw it. The reference? Let me see if we can pull up a visual for our show. That'll be real exciting. Visuals are always fun. Let me get rid of that ticker so we have enough space. There you go. Remember remember the last time I tried to pull something up and share my screen, I crashed. So hang on to your hats here, folks. <laughs> oh, oh, it's gone now. Where'd it go? Oh. This is why Google Drive sucks. <laughs> Things disappear on me, and I don't know how to find the rest of them. Oh boy, where'd it go? If we don't, we can't find it. We can't find it. No big deal. I saw it earlier today, but now I don't. What a mess! <laughs> Sorry, folks. We don't have a. Maybe I can just pull up a general map on Google. There you go. You, I think you can probably Google it. Didn't think we'd say that twenty years ago. <laughs> just Google it. <laughs> this isn't right. That's not all the teams. There it is. That's what we want. There you go. That seems accurate. I don't know if that's 100%, but it looks 100%. So we're going to use it. All right. Let me try and share my screen and not crash. Am I crashing? No, not yet. All right, not yet. It looked like I was there for a brief moment. You're still moving. Oh, Lord. There we go. There's a zoom button. What a, what a 
This is very exciting radio. <laughs> oh my gosh, what is happening? All right, let me share my screen, and this will be um, as good as it'll get. There you go. <laughs> it might not be great. Oh, there we go. But it's what you're going to get. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, it's not bad. So I think it's accurate except for the Raiders, but yeah, not too bad. Not because the Raiders move, that's right. It's close enough. So that, and that's where I struggle to find a map, too, just because not everyone's updated their NFL stadium or NFL team maps. Um, it's pretty new. Yeah, it is still pretty Some new. of these teams. Yeah. So Yeah, this is a 2011 map. So, yeah, let's, who's your first division? So let's go with... Let's go with one that didn't change first. Kind of see what, where we're going. So the AFC West, the way it's panned out with the Chiefs, Broncos, Raiders, and Chargers. Yeah, I didn't see any reason to change that. I think it covers the West half of the of the country with the AFC teams. There's no one out of place really. So I like that one. So, so we got our Chiefs here. We got our Broncos here. Oh. Technically, the Raiders are right here oh. now. Out there and the Chargers. And the Chargers, yeah. So, so yeah, this is good. Those are the four most West teams. So, AFC West sounds good to me. So, let's go to the, to the AFC South next. So, the current AFC South is the Jaguars, Texans, Titans, and Colts. This is a better map. Is it better? Yeah, the, at least this one has the Rams in the right spot. Oh, there you go. And it has the team the team symbols, so I like this one more. I'm going with this one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, ASC South, something just, just didn't sound right to me there. And so for the new ASC South, if the NFL were to redesign it, it would be Jaguars, Dolphins, Texans, Titans. What do you think about that one? Jaguars, Dolphins, Texans, Titans. Yeah. And who's in the current AFC South? Uh, Colts, Texans, Titans, Jaguars. So you're just getting rid of the Colts and adding the Dolphins. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That I think it makes sense. Definitely, I think it makes more sense at least that way mm-hmm. because it, it takes it takes them out of on the AFC East, um, which the Dolphins really didn't. uh, Granted, the Dolphins are very East, Mm -hmm. but they're very South compared to the other AFC East teams. Right. So it it, it does make make sense to me. Yeah. Um, And just trying to think of some, some different history. I mean, where would the Dolphins land in that division? At least... Especially recently, they've only had to they have they've had a lot of competition, um, mm-hmm. especially with the Patriots and the Bills have been a tough team lately. Yeah, you know, like the Jaguars, the Titans, and the Texans, three teams that you know kind of struggled as of late. So have, mm-hmm. the Dolphins might have been more competitive in recent years, and it might have changed yeah. their layout. Maybe made a couple of playoffs. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, they, they definitely could have made a couple of playoffs, and I think in that division with a couple of those teams, kind of. Not playing up the par. Yeah. We'll move on to the next division. You kind of mentioned there that Dolphins got removed from is the AFC East. So this one I got a little bit on the creative side, but I think it makes sense. So in the AFC East, I went Patriots, Jets, Ravens, and Steelers. Ooh. Ravens and Steelers. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So it kind of takes that northeast pocket, northeast mid Atlantic pocket. Yeah, and then you're you're pretty far east. I think I like it. I think that's a a great division. Could you imagine the Steelers and Patriots playing twice a year? Yeah. So who say your teams again? So, just so I can engrave it in my memory. Patriots, Jets, Ravens, and Steelers. Yeah. 
So the Bills get kicked out as well. Because I was about to say the Bills against the Steelers with those defenses would have been good. But that's not a thing. No. Yeah, the Patriots. Yeah, that'd be cool with the Patriots against Big Ben all those years. Yeah. Two games. That and that that's a that would have been a great in division rival uh rivalry they got going on there with because they both have very great histories, but those both of them together in the same division, one of their histories would have been diminished. Yeah. I guess they're granted they're still in the same conference. Mm-hmm. But having to play themselves two times a year, maybe three times if they met in the playoffs, that would have changed a lot of things, maybe. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I think finally the Jets would have just been demolished in that division. Sorry. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> the yep. Jets would be nobody. Je- yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's six losses a year right there. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. So then last but not least for the AFC, I have the AFC North, which is where you find the Bills, the Browns, the Bengals, and the Colts. And the Colts. Okay, so you kind of got that like Lake Erie heading yeah. southwest kind of thing going on. Great Lakes, yeah, kind of area. Yep. Bills, Browns, Colts, Bengals. The Bengals huh. were a little bit south as compared to like the Steelers and Ravens, but I figured Ravens and the Steelers kind of suck to the East Coast and will right. make the actual northern teams. Yeah. Be that in the AFC North. So that's how I broke down the AFC is kind of how it would reset. I like that. That's an interesting division. The I think the Bills would have had a lot more success in that division, that's for sure. You would have seen a lot more Bills Colts battles. Yeah. When Peyton Manning was there and then when Andrew Luck was there and the Bills were still trying to get better. That would I think that would have been interesting to see. Andrew Luck would have lasted even less time going against that Bills defense. He would have been murdered. Yeah. <laughs> and Andreas likes that division as well. Probably mainly because the Bills wouldn't have had as much competition. That's probably yeah. Bills fans would probably love to be in that division. No Patriots. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. No Patriots. Let's go. <laughs> oh, so moving on to the NFC conference, um, there was actually Two, two divisions that I didn't change because looking at the map, there's no need to. The one absolutely that didn't change at all is the NFC North because it's Packers, Lions, Bears, Vikings. They're all relatively close to each other. They could probably, we talked about this earlier, literally take a <laughs> bus to each other's stadiums because why waste money for flying? Right. And then... um. They're just the four most nor- northern teams. I mean, granted, it really doesn't make sense to change that at all. There's nothing that you could do right. there to change that. Exactly. So then the next division that I looked at and I was like, nah, maybe 10 years ago I would have changed it, but not now. So that's the NFC West. And granted, because the St. Rams moved from St. Louis back to LA, if they were still in St. Louis, I probably would have thrown the Cowboys into the NFC West, but since the Rams are back in LA, um, so it'd be Rams, 49ers, Cardinals, Seahawks for the NFC West still. And then... So- and if, it, if you cross conferences, you could definitely throw in like the Raiders or the probably the Chargers right. instead yeah. of like instead of the Cardinals if you're crossing conferences, but yeah, just a reminder if anyone's just tuning in now for some reason, really late in the show. Yeah. This is not – we're making divisions inside the same conferences still. Yeah. Yep. So let's see. Which one should we go with next, NFC East or NFC South? Oh, let's save the East for last for all of our NFC Easters tuning in because I know there might be a few. So for the NFC South, it's Saints, Bucks, Falcons, and Cowboys – Ooh, we're kicking out the Panthers. Yep. And we're, bringing and we're going with the Cowboys. That's saucy. That's an interesting that, division. That illustrious Cowboys team mm-hmm. with all of its history in the past, mm-hmm. how much of that would have been diminished going against the likes of Drew Brees? Yeah. 
probably wouldn't have had too much trouble with the Bucks. Maybe not much with the Falcons, but the Saints and Cowboys would have caused for a great division oh, battle. Definitely. So they pulled the Cowboys out of the NFCs. Going and looking at the NFCs. Let's see it. We have Eagles, Giants, Redskins, and Panthers. I think the Panthers makes more sense than the NFC East than they do the NFC South. And the Cowboys should net no longer be in the NFC. So I think that's the weirdest division of how it breaks. Yeah, there. for sure. Everyone's, that's always the big question. Whenever, whenever someone talks about division reset, the Cowboys are the first one that always comes to mind <laughs> every single time because NFC East. Oh yeah. Don't mind us. We're just like directly in the middle, but South of the country <laughs> makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. The so Panthers, yeah, I, I mean, Grant, I mean, it makes sense to be in there. It's an interesting, interesting team. It is interesting division. I, yeah, I think it's. I think it's interesting. Um, like obviously, you don't get the Cowboys, Eagles, Cowboys, Giants rivalries mm. anymore. But yeah, we can find some new ri- ri- rivalries for them. But, I mean, those those rivals only developed because they were in the same division, and they did cause for great games. Yeah. I'm just curious how well the Cowboys would have done in that NFC South division. And once we once we cross conferences, I'll be very excited to cross conferences and see and talk about the Cowboys again versus the Texans if they were in the same division. The battle of the can you imagine that the battle of Texas twice a year? Ooh, that that's a be- that's a big missed opportunity. Oh yeah, they could even just the- as like a a general game they play every year. It, you, you'd like to see it. I would like to see that. We could promote the crap out of that. And David Timmons coming in. Cowboys are the clear geographical outlier in the real NFC East. Yeah, that's the first one that always comes to mind when you when you talk about uh, division reset. I stop. Get rid of that. And um, that's about all the time we have this uh, this wonderful Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, well, well, we appreciate everybody tuning in, like always. Mm-hmm. You can catch this episode on all podcasting platforms after it's uploaded. It'll also be available on YouTube for those that want to see our beautiful faces and actually see the map that we talked about for the past 15 minutes. That might help some people understand what just happened if you're listening on the radio. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, um, yeah, thank you as always. Share, subscribe, follow, and like everything on and off the field related. And make sure you go and join that OOTF group so you can uh, we can start talking some fantasy football leagues. Yeah. As we always wrap up this show, a new... Well, they stayed in the same division, right? The AFC South Jaguars? Yes. <laughs> Who is there? All hail the Jockstrap King. King.